Joining me at the World Telecommunication Development Conference is Gabriel Solomon, who is Director of Partnership Development at the GSM Association. Gabriel, thanks for talking with us here in Doha today. The GSM standard has been a tremendous success all around the world. Why do you think that is? Well, I think the fundamental reason is interoperability. Um, that's delivered economies of scale and a similar experience for customers uh, worldwide. Um, so we have a whole ecosystem, now 2 billion plus subscribers, uh, low costs, same service, great service. Um, mobility has become uh, ubiquitous almost um, to the developed world and it's growing substantially in the, in the emerging markets too. I think now it's, uh, there's more subscribers in the emerging market than there are in the developed world, which is a fantastic uh, fact, I think. It's obviously cheaper to roll out wireless networks in underdeveloped parts of the world than it is fixed line. But it's not just the infrastructure, it's terminals and mobile terminals are still quite expensive. What can be done to bring that down? It is certainly a contributing factor to the total cost of ownership. Um, the GSMA has worked, as you know, on the Emerging Market Handset Program that has reduced the cost of uh, handsets X-Factory from around $80 to $30 today. And Motorola won two tenders that we put out. Um, but however, well, the interesting thing to note is the second tender, we had, I think, 12 major vendors uh, submit bids, all you know, around similar price points. So I think the industry is now focused on uh, low-cost handsets, which is good. Not only, the, sorry, the, not only the manufacturers, but also the chip suppliers, too, have announced strategies to support low-cost handsets. So tell me more about this Emerging Markets Handset Initiative. When did it start and what's the progress? Certainly. This was um, done, when was it done? About uh, 12 months ago it started in earnest, um, basically because the GSMA, I don't want to say we take all the credit, but we certainly identified uh, one of the single most uh, largest barriers to entry as being the handset cost. So we decided to work on that. We thought that we would get away with antitrust uh, issues because it was focusing on bridging the digital divide and providing services to people who otherwise couldn't afford them. Um, and to date, I believe, there are confirmed orders for more than 12 million handsets, which is uh, beating the actual expectations in the tender. But it's not just the price of handsets that's a prohibitive factor, is it? There's also issues such as local taxation. Local taxation is a very significant contributor. We did a report, Tax on the Digital Divide, that demonstrated that if governments just waive the tax on handsets, low-cost entry handsets, 930 million incremental handsets would be sold in a five-year period. That's quite substantial. There are massive demand elasticities at this level, and as we sort of go down to connect the bottom of the py pyramid, um, these little marginal cost differences have significant impact on uptake. So do you think the message is now getting across? Well, I think it's quite a capitalist argument to say that uh, if you want something to grow, don't tax it. And uh, certainly that's a message our US friends will, will advocate, and certainly we do too. But in some countries, you know, they're still quite protective. They still see uh, mobile as a luxury good and haven't quite caught up with the reality that mobile is the bridge to the digital divide. What about regulation of telecoms? I know there was a report out a few months ago about regulation in sub-Saharan Africa. Regulation is a, plays a critical role. It is the enabling environment that lets businesses operate. Um, our report showed that uh, if regulators move towards what we'd call best practice, for want of a better word, but basically fair, um, clear and consistent regulation, over five billion more dollars would have been invested in the last five years. That's about 25% incremental capex investment. That's the equivalent, say, of five cell tells. Um, that would have led to an increased penetration rate of 30%. Uh, so, you know, the benefits are massive. We did some further analysis that showed if uh, the five billion had been investment and you got this 30% uptick in subscribers, the knock-on effect on GDP in the region would be about a billion dollars. So that is a foregone opportunity for sub-Saharan Africa. There's a lot of talk here at WTDC and also the Connect the World initiative about partnerships and the importance of partnerships. Does the GSMA share the same view? Absolutely. I think the GSMA is very open to partnerships. We are trying to partner with the ITU on various fronts. We have partnered the World Bank and continue to do so on other fronts. And clearly, I think to get capacity building uh, in, in regulation, regulators uh, going, for example, partnership has to be a critical element of that, to deliver that. Are you confident that we'll be able to resolve these issues or are you pessimistic? I feel very confident, very bullish that uh, mobile will deliver, as it has done for the last uh, decade or so, sustainable, uh, low-cost, 
solutions. Um, currently, there's plus two billion people uh, subscribing to mobile services. That will be three billion by 2008, um, and we expect that to grow uh, incrementally. I think you'll also see mobile operators being the leading ISPs in many countries. In fact, they already are, I think, um, and that trend will grow as they roll out broadband services as well. Gabriel Solomon, thanks very much indeed. Pleasure.